Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Ian opening a seltzer. Um, nope. Oh, wasn't a, oh wow. Ooh, Gabe's got a seltzer. I'm about to open There's one. I'm in Schweppes. Uh, I had a, actually I had a, a brain blast before I introduce the show. I need to talk about my brain blast, which is opening a lemon lime seltzer and then adding the bubbly drops from my soda stream to make all sorts of combinations. Uh, folks, this is Local Chats episode 60. I'm your host, Will Crosby. It is the 24th of February, 2022. Joining me, as always, is Ian Gibson. Hi, how you doing? I hope you guys are doing great. This is going to be a packed episode, so buckle up. Ian has four guns. That's how packed this episode is going to be. Uh, also joining us for the very first time, it's the newsmaster himself. It is Gabe Gerwin, my coworker. Gabe, how are you? Very good. Nice to be here. I'm, I'm so happy you're here. Um, I feel like I have been thinking about getting someone for work on this show, and then it was like, four months of stressing out whether or not I should ask them for the show if I'll get in trouble if I do that. And then I messaged you and then you were like, you should check with Tam. And I was like, that's a good idea. Cause I really didn't want to, because I feel like anyone's going to be like, no, you're fired. Um, and so then I messaged Tam and he was like, yeah, it's perfectly fine. Uh, and he was like, don't say anything horrible. Uh, and I was like, well, Gabe could be an evil person. So I don't know. Uh, to which you said, I just, how do you know I'm not an evil person? <laughs> I, um, I, I was, there was, I'll just say this. There was in our discord pre podcast. I did not know who Gabe was because your username does not make it clear who you were. And so That's you're just true. a random, you're a random guest. And Will has talked about bringing <laughs> on some of his coworkers before. And I had this nightmare scenario in my mind where I was like, oh my God it's going to be Tam and they're going to gang up on me and talk about how Soulsborne games are the greatest games of all time because it's Elden Ring week. And I'm going to have to be the asshole, <laughs> the negative Nancy that is like, all right, let's calm down. They're not that great. Okay. And I was like, that's that's gonna, with that. Yeah. It's, it's like, <laughs> oh my God, this is going to be, this is going to be an ambush of colossal portions. And it's just like, maybe, so maybe it'll still happen, but at least I won't have to go. Tam has like like a, a reputation on Twitter of just being like diehard Soulsborn fan. So at least that's not happening. We'll still talk about it though. I feel like I have way too much anxiety to ask Im important people to be on the show. Not that Gabe's not important, but I we had you wow. he, no <laughs> four minutes ago. I should say that he at least responds to me on Twitter and laughs at my jokes sometimes. Right, so I was like that's enough to 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 send a podcast, you know? Yeah, G Gabe, you don't you don't have to laugh at his jokes on Twitter anymore. You're just doing that to be nice to the new guy, right? <laughs> I am I am completely genuine. You know, if I don't find you funny, it's DNI. You're probably muted. In in fact, yeah. are you winking in Morse code? I can't tell. <laughs> Sometimes I was like, man, Gabe likes tweets really quickly or like retweets things, and then I was like. Oh, right, because I assume the entire news team is on Twitter refreshing constantly. Um, so uh, that that really makes sense. Yeah, it's perma I, I permanently have it open on my computer. Um, like Slack, it's like Slack, Twitter, like the website and in our uh, like workflow project Asana. I uh, like all five of the in a calendar. Like I have all those open all the time. And yeah, so it, it, it is. Like it's it's like ninety percent of where you find news initially. Yeah, yeah. I, I always love that. Sounds news. like um. Oh, you go, Ian. Sorry, I was just gonna say I I had a friend in college, um, and he worked at a local newspaper. He he had just left college like the year or two before, and he worked at a local newspaper. And his job was to monitor the wire. So he literally was just watching like Associated Press, like Reuters, AFP wire things. And as soon as they came in, his responsibility was to turn them around and publish them on the news website. And I was just like, "You so you just do that all day?" And he's like, "Yep." And I guess Twitter is the modern version of that in a way. <laughs> yeah, it's just the difference is like in between all the important stories, you'll see something that either. Makes you very angry because someone has some terrible take, like uh, Anna Lynn McCord today with that with that uh, poem she read. Um, oh my god! But and then you get distracted and forget what you were looking at, and then five minutes go by and you're like, oh yeah, that's what I was trying to do. So I forgot about that. 
Yeah. I forgot about Gal Gadot. Imagine <laughs> it's this already on our head. Yeah, it's not, this, so, is, this is significantly worse in my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you hit the nail on the head. What did you? I would you say just don't say anything? Like people I think, you I think need I to say something. Just not say anything. Which yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like oh, it's like if you don't like oh, that's the worst thing about Twitter. Anyways, we're not here to talk about Twitter. We're here to talk about video games. <laughs> um. <laughs> Also, David's in the chat and pointed out that I immediately roasted the guest live on air. And uh, if you can't take the I heat, it. don't come to the roast uh, place where that you we invited cook you roast. to. <laughs> that we invited you to. Um, <laughs> Jeepers. Um, Gabe, since you're the guest, um, I'm giving you free reign to talk about the games you've been playing this week, uh, which will probably lead us into a much broader conversation because your second game is something we've all played, but why don't you start with your first game? And uh, because I know uh, I haven't touched this game and I want to know your opinions on it. Yeah. So I've been playing uh, horizon forbidden West pretty consistently. Um, I think except yesterday, uh, which we'll talk about why in a, in a minute, but um, you know, if you liked the first game, you're going to like this one. If you didn't, you're not, it's very much another Rising game right down to the the I don't know flaws or like sort of pacing of the game where it starts out very slowly. Do um, mm-hmm. you remember um, Zero Dawn? Like the first several hours of that game were uh, kind of not great, and then it picked up. It doesn't take that long in uh, Forbidden West to get going, but w- once it does, it, it like I, I'll you know be up to one in the morning playing it, and I forget and. Like, oh, yep, should probably go to bed now. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you like that, which I am a big fan of the first one, you'll you'll like Forbidden West for sure. Uh, on PS5, it looks great. It plays really well. Everything that I think they did well in the first one, they also bring into this one as well. So I'm, you know, I'm very, very happy with it. It's just so much is coming out right now that people might forget about it pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, like last time, actually. Oh yeah, I think Horizon. Uh, I played a little bit of the first one last year, uh, and I I got like eight or nine hours in, and I was like, okay, I see what it's doing, but it kind of wasn't there for me. And this one, I was like, yeah. And then another game came out, and I was like, if this game probably came out isolated from all other video games of the same ilk, like open world games, I think I would have given it a stronger chance. And been like, here's my sixty dollars for the PS4 version and the free PS5 version. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna play it, see where I, it gets me. I'm fine with that. But I think its close proximity to uh, other games is kind of what I was like. I'm gonna wait a couple days, play some Game Pass games, and then and then move on from there. You know? Yeah. Yep. That was like. It didn't hurt it the first time, it seems, because it still sold super well. But that game came out like two or three days before before Breath of the Wild. I don't, I don't remember exactly. And it was the same. I bought it at launch, but I played a few hours of it, and it was months before I picked it back up because so much you know came out. It's the, it's the same for this. Um, if they had been able to release it in like late 2021, like they wanted to, there weren't really any other games like that uh, that I can recall near the end of last year. So that probably would have would have worked out better, but. Yeah, well, Cyberpunk, well, at least for 2020. So it would have done a lot better than, yeah, <laughs> compared to Cyberpunk. Um, yeah, that was the year, I, that was the whole year before. It's just crazy to think about it, how that yeah. game's finally. <laughs> I, think, I think with Horizon, um, I really, it's it's weird. I was really watching the reviews for this one. And I really appreciate, I, I don't know why. It's almost like a zeitgeist thing. But it felt like every single review was like pointing out, hey, this is a lot like the first one. If you didn't like the first one, you're not going to like this one. If you did, then you're going to love this. And that felt super targeted to me because I didn't even get out of that starting tutorial area. I never got to the open world in Horizon Zero Dawn because I played like four or five hours. I did the first tall neck and I was like, I'm not enjoying this. I'm not going to put any more time into it. And reading the reviews, it's like every single one uh, was targeted to me because they all hit on the point of like, hey, this is more of the same. And I was like, okay, well then I guess I won't be trying this one. Cause it's not doing enough new. And it was just kind of weird to see that much like honesty in a review. It's not to say that reviews are dishonest, but there's something about horizon 
that people acknowledge it's kind of a solid seven in a way, but it's a solid seven, but also, but also a little bit uh, controversial. I don't want to say controversial, but there's a little, little bit of a dichotomy. You're either going to love it or you're not. And yeah. it's, it's kind of weird that that's become the general mood and the, the judgment, the, uh, the criteria under which you judge the game and that series now. Yeah. I will say, like, like I said, for the first game, I'm, I'm, I'm with you in that. I did not like that tutorial area. Mm -hmm. Um, for, I don't know what made me stick with it besides the fact that at the time I didn't have as much money and I wanted to make the most of what I spent. But it does change like drastically once you get out of that area. Uh, everything has more meaning to it. The the like the story gets way more interesting. The mm. um, the encounters and the areas you're in get a lot more interesting. The the tribal stuff that that's there really early on uh, is is not all that important once you get past that point but i mean I, I can understand if a game's not grabbing you and you want to do something else do something else um yeah. with this one at the same like i said with with forbidden west i i was like an hour into it the first night i was like yeah i mean this feels like the other one i think i like this i'm not sure and then the next day once it actually opened up and i was able to just start going places i remember why i really you know what what worked well about about the games um just the choice in the combat there's so many places to go and most of them are actually worth going to but also if you want to just mainline the story it, it's not level gating you to the to the degree where you can't do that like right now i'm i think i'm two or three levels over like what it says to do for the missions and and i've done a little side stuff but i haven't like spent hours and hours and hours just focusing on that um but yeah like if you ever give that game another chance i i would say like force yourself to get through that opening area and like it, gotcha. it, it'll feel like a different game after that point i i honestly i was thinking about it but then i realized i didn't own a copy i was playing a game fly copy of the first one i think i think i'm just gonna keep PS5. my fingers crossed i want sorry what was that i said you're on ps5 no i do oh you oh yeah that's right it's part of that ps5 thing yeah, it's too late now. I'm playing Elden Ring, but I, I think <laughs> I think I think now I'm at the point where I'm kind of like fingers crossed where I'm just like, come on, gorilla, like make the third one actually something like different and better. Not to say the second one isn't better, but it sounds like it's too much of the same. I really want it to be to, to add a lot more innovation to it and then I'll pick it back up. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just happy that I read the reviews and I was like, yeah. This is exactly what I wanted out of these reviews. If I if I didn't like the first one, is this any different? Not enough. Okay, I don't need to play it. Yeah, they should make another kill zone. That's my response to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna stop you before you hit Elden Ring. Uh. Because we've all played it. Uh. I'm gonna go quick. I I don't know if I talked about this last week. I'm still playing. Nobody saves the world. Uh, no, you didn't talk about it at all. Really? I'm an idiot. Um. It's really fun, Ian. I know you picked it up at one point. Uh, so uh, basically, Gabe, have you touched it at all? No, I have not. So basically, uh, you're this nobody. Uh, you found a wizard's wand, and you can transform into different characters. And as you play the characters, you are leveling them up through quests. As you level them up, they get more powers. And when you hit certain ranks, like C or the alphabetical ranks, all the way up to A, uh, you unlock more forms through this like uh family tree chart uh to unlock more forms and then you eventually get the ability to uh have the main form and then you can add uh, attacks and abilities from other forms to your main form and and like the quest kind of lead you in a certain situation so like for the guard it'll tell you once you unlock that ability it's like hey why don't you add the horses thing to this so you kind of get a feel for what abilities add to what kind of attacks and stuff um it's really fun it's a really cool concept i'm i'm enjoying the game my only problem with the game so far and i think i'm about must be like 15, 10 12 hours in maybe 15 uh is like it's hard to kind of tell where you're supposed to go um yeah it kind of just hits you with a big main quest and is like oh explore the area but then i i've, I've run into things like I went to this one dungeon and there was this big poison area and I wasn't sure if I'm supposed to level up my characters long enough to unlock a character who can survive poison or I'm just supposed to get through this poison to the other side and it's like a difficulty thing and I, they're supposed to be poison and it's supposed to be difficult. 
Um, so there's like little things like that. So I, I'm making slow progress in it. It's it's a really good uh, feeling game. It plays very well. Uh, I think one of my favorite things Ian touched on this last week is um, the horse. Uh, the horse's attack is a kick, but it's it's back legs. So you have to lock, use the right trigger to lock the horse, and then you run backwards and kick things as you're running backwards. <laughs> Are you, yeah. uh, are, are you uh, a jackass fan? <laughs> uh, tangentially. <laughs> uh, uh, do, you know, or do you know what I'm talking about? There, I think there, so, yeah. There's a bit, I don't remember which one it is, I think the, either the second or the third, where Aaron is playing like pin the tail on the donkey, and he's just wearing like a cup and a jock strap, and uh, he keeps trying to touch the, he doesn't get even close to touching the donkey, he's, he's like two feet away, and it keeps kicking him like really hard on the legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's that's also an example of like one of the best things about the game is that you have the different forms like you could be a horse you can be a slug you can be a bodybuilder and they each have their abilities but then you can mix and match them so like when i was the horse i would have the back kick but then i would do like the bodybuilder's extra ability which is when i hit people they go further back and if they hit a wall they take extra damage so i was just kicking them as a horse into walls <laughs> getting extra damage off of it and it's just like the way you start mixing and matching the abilities that game is it's very, very good. Very good. Also, the writing's really well done. Uh, I, I find, like, a lot of it, like, I'm not skipping through it super fast. And I think my favorite thing that's happened is I, w I was at this, you, so you, like, go to these different guilds and you do quests for them. So at the Witch's Guild, there's this guy who turned into a fish. And you click on him, and he's like, hey, can you go get me a cure for my, my fish thing? And he tells you this whole story. He's like, yeah, my brother and I, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, okay, I'll go get the cure for you. So you go warp to where the cure is, talk to the lady, and she goes, so what are his symptoms? And she asks you pointed questions of his entire story that he told you that I of skipped his, like, through. Like what he specifically said. Yeah. And I'm like, it's oh, like, what a call oh, out. You got me. You got me. <laughs> so I went all the way back, memorized it, which it wasn't that many things, but when you're not thinking about it, you're like, ah. Oh. Yeah. And the best part is the answers to that story are all the obvious ones in the multiple choice that she gives you. So if you were just picked the obvious ones, you would have gotten through anyways, but you weren't because you thought that it would be complicated. So I just thought that was very well done and like a piece of yeah. game writing that, that kind of turned me for a loop. My, my The most evil thing uh, that uh, game devs do is if there's a post credit scene and they don't let you see it if you skip the credits. Oh, uh, that happened yes. in Halo. 3. That happened in Halo Three. I remember thinking Master Chief was dead when I came to school the next day, and someone was like, "What are you talking about?" And I was just like, "Huh?" They said, "Yeah, there's another scene." And I'm like, "You're, you know, you're, you're, what are you talking about?" And then I looked it up and was like, "Oh, okay, you're right." <laughs> Dang, I I That's forgot funny. about that because I that is like I always have a hesitation uh, subconsciously when I go to skip credits, and I bet it's from that sort of stuff. I I never. Because now game companies want you to see the extra thing at the end because they want you to play Marvel. the next game or something. Yeah, it, it's yeah. not like a yeah, exactly. It's not a it's not a surprise anymore. There was yeah, I think it's I think it was Assassin's Creed Three had like thirty minutes of credits and you couldn't skip them. That was and that game wasn't even good. What does it think it is? Metal Gear Solid? Come on now. <laughs> there are some games that do uh, achievements for viewing the credits, and I like that. Um, I always find that funny because it's like, yeah, I'll watch your credits for achievement points. Um, I'm not above it. Um, okay, Ian, tell me, tell me the games you've been playing. You've been playing one that I'm excited to hear about. Um, I've been playing a lot of Vampire Survivors. Um, yeah. it's it's I guess the best way to describe it is it is a it's a single stick shooter with auto fire. <laughs> so so instead of it being twin sticks where you have to decide where you're pointing that's just not a factor all you're doing is moving and you're not just you're not de deciding when you fire all your weapons are auto firing um so at the start like the main character you have a whip and the whip just every second whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. but then as you're going around you're getting all these enemies that are just like coming towards you and you uh you kill the enemies they drop some experience points you get the experience points you level up each time you level up you can choose to either like uh make one of your existing weapons more powerful you can get a skill 
um, like, you know, 10% more experience gain, or you can pick a new weapon, um, like a magic wand that automatically fires every one second at a nearby enemy. And it's cumulative And then it's just survive. Weapon. Yeah, exactly. It's cumulative weapons. Um, and it's a, I, I don't care if I get this wrong, Will, it's a roguelike. Uh, you're, you're, it's run-based. You earn coins throughout the run, either from picking them up off objects off the ground or by opening chests off of big bosses. And um, those coins let you unlock new characters or unlock overall powers, like better health, better strength, etc. That is then across all runs. Um, I, I mean, I think that, God, it's just so good, y'all. Look, let me just put it this way. This is a Flash game. This is a very, very good Flash game. It's not literally a Flash game, but it feels like a very good Flash game. Like, it's very simplistic, but they have, quote-unquote, depth in it just by having a lot of enemy variety, weapon variety, in, in ways that make sense. You know, like the weapon, like there's there's area of attack. There's random area of attack. There's area of attack centered around you. Then there's, like, projectiles. There's projectiles that bounce. Big, slow projectiles. Like, it's almost like this, like, easy game design in a way where they're just doing variations on common things. But all of it fits together. It's not even that it fits together so well. It's just all of it works and all of it makes sense. And it's so common sense that it feels like a flash game. But then you play it and you go, uh, oh, I played like like eight hours of it this weekend. <laughs> I couldn't stop playing it. Like like each run doesn't go longer than 30 minutes because when you get to 30 minutes, death shows up and kills you. But you're still just like mindlessly doing it and you're having so much fun doing it that it's just like... This is honestly just an incredible game. It's definitely so far a shortlist for 2022 game of the year because it's so simplistic, but it knows exactly what it is. It does it so well. My only complaint is that it's early access. So you kind of start to see the limit in the content pretty quickly. But even once I hit that limit, I still played it for a couple hours because it's just so good. Just moving around, dodging enemies, getting powers, doing like, okay, in each run, you can only have six weapons and six, uh, uh, skills that you can pick, but there's more than that. So you got to kind of start being like, Oh, I want the garlic, but then I want this. I want just area of attack stuff. So then I can pick up all the area attack bonus skills and really build it up. It's just, it's so good. It's two 99 on steam. You have to play this game. If you haven't played it yet, it's just so good. It's crazy. I, I, I I'm not like a huge quote unquote indie game fan, but I feel like over the last couple of years, I've come to hate triple a games because they focus so much on graphics and animation and storytelling and cutscenes that the gameplay just suffers. And then a game comes along like this and it's just like, no, boom, gameplay, solid, nothing fancy about it. And I'm playing it for hours and hours. It's so good. I, Will, I, I saw you've been playing it. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I think I talked about it last week. It's, it's so much fun. Uh, I think, I was surprised you said, I, I mean, you might've just been ballparking a, a time there, but I had like a 45 minute run in the library the other day and i don't i don't believe you because i looked it up at 30 minutes death shows up and it's supposed to auto kill you and the only way you can go further is if it glitches and death like doesn't show up to kill you but it's very rare I so it's basically at, 30 minutes it kills your run i'm looking at a screenshot now this the graphics look like roller coaster tycoon almost yeah yeah absolutely um yeah I feel that. it's like symphony of the night sprites um that's that's why i gotta go like i don't know how i could check my run time somewhere but it, they I, do have I, stats for like longest runs that i, I think check. you can look at uh, when you guys talk about elder ring i might check because i swear it, i could be wrong but i swear it was longer than half an hour but i because i was going like i was starting to get bored because i i would just walk into enemies and they would disappear like i would just have to well, circle I, bosses and stuff you know i i was getting so good that I, I had the last run I did 15 minutes into the run onwards. I, it was like an idler game. I, I was literally playing with hands <laughs> off the controls, which you're not really supposed to. But I just built up such a great deck of skills that I was just sitting there. The whole screen is swarmed with enemies, yeah. but none of them could get with, with near me. So it was only at the borders and they were just constantly being killed. And I was still walking around to pick up experience and stuff. And even doing that, it felt great because I was just like, God, I'm so freaking good at this game. Look at this build I got. <laughs> you know, just like, look know, at these it's... weapons I picked up. I, I did it right. It, so it, it does feel really good. And yeah, like that garlic skill I learned pretty early. On. And the, the other nice thing is every run has different weapons. So you're not, it's not like every run you're like, got to get the skill I know is good. Uh, Cause they're <laughs> not always there. Um, but I, the, the other one I really liked is that rune tracer one, which shoots yeah, out and then bounces just, around and just kills as it goes. Yeah. It's, 
it's really cool. Um, so good. Yeah, I highly yeah, recommend I, it. I, uh, just like Ian. I'll just say. The other crazy thing is, <gasps> there are hidden evolved weapons, where if you don't know about it, if you happen to get a specific weapon up to level eight, which is max level, and you have a corresponding skill, it'll auto evolve it basically the next time you open a treasure chest. So I'll give you an example. One of my favorite ones is it's a Bible and the Bible comes out and it rotates around you for a couple seconds and then it goes away and it just hits enemies around you as it's, as it's floating and rotating around you. But if you get that up to level eight and you get this other thing, it becomes just a ring of permanent fiery Bibles that are just Jeez. always up. So you just have this ring of, of Bibles on fire that are just all the time. It never goes away. No cooldown. It's just these cool little hidden evolved weapons that you can try to unlock or even just discover during the runs that that explains it because i i had the axes and i got those all the way up and they turned into scythes and like mm -hmm. they would spin around and like a full 360 and kill everything yeah so that makes sense uh okay tell us about this next game like kingdom hearts 2 is that a recent release i'm still playing kingdom hearts 2 because you assholes made me do it um I don't know, man. Like, okay, first of all, it's it's a big roller coaster with Kingdom Hearts 2. I think I'm up to like 11 or 12 hours in. I think I'm at like 11, 15. Uh, apparently, the game's like 30 plus hours, 30, 40 hours, which is an absolute nightmare because it's taking forever for me to play it. It's a roller coaster because I'm at the part of the game where I'm kind of just going between worlds. Well, I don't want to say going between worlds, but I'm like, let's go to this world, do that stuff. Okay, the story takes me to this world. Let's do that stuff. And they'll, they'll just be like, hey, go to Mulan world. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> go to go to into Winnie the Pooh book. OK, that's bonkers. And somebody's ripping pages out of the book. So he doesn't know who his friends are anymore. What? That's bonkers. How about you go to. Pirates of the Caribbean world where it's just a weirdly uh, realistic portrayal of literally just the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. And you're just there along with them for the ride. That sucks. It sucks. I'm calling you out, Zach, from Save Data. It sucks. I can't believe you hyped that world up. But then what if you go into <laughs> Steamboat Willy World and when you go in Steamboat Willy World, they crunch the audio. Everything goes black and white and you literally have new models for everybody. So they look slightly more Steamboat Willy. It's crazy the, the variety in worlds and how good some of them are and inventive and creative and how some of them are literally just like, Hey, let's do that Disney movie over again, but as a 90 minute kingdom hearts experience. So I'm still having fun with it, but it's, it's definitely a bit up and down. Uh, so tune in, tune in Tuesdays and Saturday nights for that. It's, it's an absolute nightmare mess. And somehow, somehow a decent stream who, who would have guessed it. The only one of those games I have any real experience with besides playing a little bit at my friend's house is a uh, chain of memories. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> That's a weird oh. game. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ian Ian is a notorious hater of all things video games. Um so the Twitch we had a Twitch thing uh -huh. for channel points and they voted to make him play through all of Kingdom Hearts 2 on a stream. And he has to play alone. Uh it's it's a pretty good looking stream, I, I won't lie. And also we can pay to play things, and one of those things is simple and clean sung by Screaming Toad. And it is the worst it's thing like I've ever heard. Long. I think I've heard that one. I've also heard uh, uh, Daffy Duck do it. Yeah, oh, man. there's there's a there's a uh, a Daffy or, or Donald and um, Goofy version that's in yeah. there that's been played a couple times. Yeah. There's also it's... some pretty good Donald Trump quotes that you have yes. people pay money for that I genuinely like, I'll enjoy. Pay, I'll pay ten cents. Yeah. I'll pay ten cents to make him listen to this at full volume with headphones on. <laughs> The best is that Goofy yell scares you every single time. <laughs> it's very oh, weird. It's so good. Okay, now that we've gotten the the crap out of the way. It's time I for say. news. It's time for, no. It's time to talk about the one game we've all been playing. Uh Elden Ring officially released at six PM Eastern. Six PM Eastern? Yeah. On three PM Pacific. On PC. Uh, today, so it is out there. There's uh, no embargoes or anything that I have to uphold. Um, boy, how much have you boys played this? 
Go ahead, Gabe. I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, just about two hours so far. I got uh, I got it just yesterday, um, and I was helping doing some uh, little guide things. But yeah, so I'm I'm only about two hours in. Um, I've played all the other and beaten all all the other like from Souls games, um, not the original version of Dark Souls One or uh, Demon Souls, but the remaster and the and the PS5 one. So yeah, I'm about two hours in. I'm at the boss that everyone said apparently was going to be a big roadblock. Um, and I it was really late last night when I tried fighting him, so I have not uh, tried too much more. Um, I picked the uh, the vagabond boring you know night class to to do it. But Same. I'm hoping tonight to be able to beat that boss. Uh, I'm curious I... what boss you're talking about. Oh gosh, what's his name? Murgit Margit Margit. Like is is he the is he Stormvale the um you castle. you go through the archway and he's just hanging out there at the archway and he drops down. So yeah, and he, has, he has like the glowing like hammer thing that he pulls out in phase two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I think that's the one where I went through two. there. <laughs> and he dropped and I was like, I'm not I'm not ready to deal with you yet. So I just yeah, it, away. It, 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 you ha you start the thing that's cool about Elden Ring is even if you don't when, when I was fighting him last night, uh the servers were down. I, I don't know, I guess they're preparing maintenance to, to get ready for like the like public launch, but the servers were down, but you still have these um spirit things that you get pretty early mm -hmm. on. Uh so that didn't help me very much, but it made me feel a little bit better. I, I was able to like send out these three wolves and have him they didn't do much damage, but he basically just focused on them so i could do some hits and i was able to actually stagger him and get in a you know visceral hit whatever they call it in, in this game um and then he still you know killed me with without me even getting him down like half health but luckily there's no like resource that's tied to using those guys so next fight you can do it again um mm -hmm. so that that's nice the, the uh what are the is, sites of grace is that what they call them in this one the uh yeah. bonfires they're everywhere. Yeah, um, yeah. I feel like there's almost too many of them. Like, and maybe I'm, I'm, I'm an asshole from playing the other games, but I'm like, they're, this is too close to the boss. Make me run past a couple enemies and get scared on my way there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. It's it feels like it feels like there's definitely some close to the bosses, but then there's sometimes where I'm wandering around for like 10, 15 minutes before yeah. I find one. Yeah. Luckily, it's it's never like, oh, my gosh, I died and I'm so far away from where I wanted to be. Like, it seems like it maybe it's because it's open world. They knew that there was a lot more to account for. Like, it doesn't feel like it's wasting your time. Like you can get, I think, in in some of the games, especially Demon Souls, because the world itself is what usually ends up killing you in that game. The bosses like I didn't think the bosses in Demon Souls were comparatively all that difficult. Uh, but the world, you'll fall off stuff and die. You'll get killed by some random enemy you didn't see because they all gang up on you and you're poisoned or whatever. Mm -hmm. So far in this one, at least, it seems like there's an there are enough of the sites of grace and uh, you know the thing with like your your flask refilling if you kill like a group of enemies that it's not it's not like punishing you for exploring or for um, you know maybe not knowing the exact route that you were supposed to take to this area or whatever. Uh, and I and I can appreciate that, um, you know, without losing what makes a from soft game a from soft game. Like some of the animations, very clearly just being copy and pasted from Dark Souls. <laughs> sure. uh, yeah. I don't yeah. even care. <laughs> uh, I'm about. I think I I checked right before, or I was playing up until the podcast. I'm three hours and twenty six minutes in. Uh, about thirty minutes of that is me in the basement trying to fix my water heater and leaving the game running. But uh, I, what game is that? <laughs> I haven't been to that area yet. Yeah, it's a weird, weird yeah. area. Um, so I, I got to that boss and I said ah, I'm good. Uh, I'm the astrologer, so I'm magic and fighting. I, that's kind of the way I played most Souls games. I, I have only ever beaten Bloodborne. I have not beaten any of the other ones. I've gotten a decent way into one and three. Uh. Played a tiny bit of two, and I've never touched Sekiro. Um, so I, I, I've just been exploring a bunch, running around. Uh, I actually found a back way into that castle, uh, and so I was exploring all 
uh, this whole backside of that castle and looking through things. Um, there is a giant door that I can't open. Uh, it, it, there's not even a prompt saying it's like stuck or something. So I wonder if that leads to the area after you beat that boss. Um, so they like kind of, you can't like completely cir circumnavigate a boss or something. Uh, and then I just got to the, I guess it's like the, the hub area. Um, yeah. I don't even know what triggered that. I just died enough that it sent me there eventually. Yeah, because I, I, I sat at a bonfire and she was like, oh, your testing is over and touch my hand. And so it just warped me what? there. And I was like, I guess I'm here now. Uh, and then I jumped Are into that there? pit. Uh, the Melinda lady. Yeah, yeah. her name is. Matilda? Yeah. Um, and so I, I jumped mine. into that pit in that in that in that round table place and then uh an invader comes and kills you and now i can't get my souls back and i'm very upset well, i didn't jump in there yeah i, I was like oh it's gonna instant kill me because i saw all the blood taints but now hindsight 50 50 uh all the blinds all the blood taints were on the ground down there which means they had to have lived down there for at least a little bit uh the the term you're using for that is interesting what Blood Nothing. points, the blood, uh, the blood splurts, whatever. That oh, yeah, is. that's that's not what you said before. Oh, hindsight's fifty fifty. Yeah, we get it. Um, I, I, that's a old inside joke that I probably shouldn't explain, but uh, my oh. friend said hindsight fifty fifty, and I think he missaid it. But his justification is, even if you could go back and change what you were gonna do, there's a fifty percent chance you'd do the same thing. Okay. So we just started saying hindsight's what? fifty fifty. Uh because you might yeah. still do it again. Um, there's, another, there's another part where it says to jump in somewhere really early on. I think it might be after that first boss that's supposed to kill kill you, kills you, and you wake up. Um, yeah, yeah. There's, 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 a, there's a, you, you jump down in, and then that takes you through a bunch of the tutorial stuff, and then it drops you back in front of the door. Oh, uh, I just I just said, no, nope, not doing that. You're going to kill me, and I, and I open up the door anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was just I, like tutorial stuff. Oh, okay. I got that guy pretty far down and I was like, oh, I can handle this. And then he one shot me and I was like, I can't handle this. Uh, the, the, you're talking about the big one that you then like resurrect afterwards. Yeah. The like story okay. one that's supposed to kill you. Yeah. Cause there's one boss after that, that I just found by accident that I actually did kill. Like on my first try, I was oh, nice. great about it, but it's like, oh, okay, that's a fake first boss. Cause then you get to the, the Margaret thing and it's like, nope. You know, yeah, I found like a cave big. boss too. That That's I was like, about. "Yeah, I'll yeah. come back to you, sir." Uh, I mean, that one. Yeah, yeah, Beast Man. Yeah. He's not bad. I feel like I'm just like exploring before I like crunch and like want to do bosses and stuff because I'm like so fascinated. Um, the, okay, I need to ask this question. I talked to I talked to a lady and she gave me jellyfish spirits. Uh. And when I go to use them, my character just touches his butt and throws his hand in the air, and he doesn't do anything. Hmm. Uh, is it grayed out? Yeah. Or is it... Uh, have you tried doing it near the jellyfish? No. It's not a joke. There's, there's jellyfish. Uh, no. I, I'm, I'm guessing, me. how much does it cost magic to use them? Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. I think because... you can just use them once per life. Weird, because even I, I went to when I was in the round table place, there was a lady who sells things and she had a spirit bell. And I was like, oh, that's the item I need in order to use it. So I bought that and then it's still nothing. So either I'm doing yeah. something wrong or uh, but she was also or selling the tell wolves, you enough. <laughs> so I thought about that. I also um, don't know how to use the ability that you can get when you like do the affinity thing on a weapon. I can't figure oh. out what you're supposed to do. You, uh, the blacksmith at the round table adds that to your weapon. Uh, oh, okay. I'll and it's like a one-time use thing. But, but once you know them, you can, you can duplicate them, uh, like the recipe or something. Yeah. Um, well, I added it, but then it says that they're supposed to, I think there's supposed to be like an ability that you can do with it. And yeah. It so, oh, oh, is it oh, I see what you're saying. Well, that's, it says that's parry and it says parry like above my, uh, yeah my items but i don't know i can't figure out how to switch it to that ability yeah huh oh yeah um the oh, i was gonna say this there's a i don't know if this is actually uh widely available now that the game's out 
but they're um i had never come across this because this is the first like major release since like working at a a place that would get embargo stuff but they like the reviewers guide like sort of thing like hey it's, in case they gave it to someone who was reviewing this game they've never touched a dark souls thing before or from software thing guide book pdf whatever it came out uh and it's like fairly well detailed for like a like just written out like hey here's what all the abilities mean here's how you do this here's how yeah. you do that and i was like that's oh, wow. super handy i think with sekiro i got something like that when i reviewed that a few years ago and that was genuinely really nice especially for making some choices near the end because it let you know like hey we're not going to spoil it but you probably want to do this if you want to see the actual you know of course mm -hmm. having something like that as a uh you know a, a regular player is usually not any fun it's it's especially with a game like this not just from soft but being like open i i feel like unless you're googling something you're really having trouble with it's best to just kind of go in as as uh green yeah. as possible um and it was interesting because it's like, yeah, it makes sense. You want the person reviewing your games to know these things. Um, even if, I mean, there's a slight thing there because like your game should explain it anyways, which honestly, this game does have plenty of those pop-ups explaining things. And I was actually surprised mm -hmm. that there was that much of it. Um, but yeah, that guide like straight up has maps and like areas and what level your weapon should be at for those areas. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, this is really interesting. Like, from just like a curiosity standpoint i'm like this is cool information like you can just slap this in like a a little adventures binding and just sell it with the game you know like i'm yeah. sure people would eat that stuff up um it's really neat ian uh i'm sorry was it the uh go ahead no you go what's your question i, was gonna say, I think it was the witcher 3 was i think that game actually did that um really? i think that it, I think every like the physical copy of that game, all of them came with. It came with like a couple stickers or something too, but it came. It, yeah, they all came with a little guidebook uh, explaining all the basics and stuff like that. See, I like and, that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Ian, how's your Elden ringing? Uh, well, I moved to New Zealand yesterday, so I got to <laughs> play it starting around six a.m. this morning. Um, I'm sorry, uh, six p.m. I mean, I'm in New Zealand now. Um, and, uh, like, I think my history with Soulsborne games is I've never really been a fan because I'm not a fan of, like, masochistic gaming where you're just kind of expected to slam your head against the wall. I, I have really appreciated the design of the games, though, particularly the world design. Like, it's just really good. I remember that that first Dark Souls, I didn't even get that that far in the first Dark Souls but I really appreciate how it's like, I've been going past this area for hours and I never realized there's a little drop down ladder here that takes you to a whole different section. And it all just kind of like rat's nest comes together in what feels like such a small space to have so much in it. Um, and I, I was really hesitant about this game because, you know, we did the whole series called Time to Die where I literally just played the first hour of each Soulsborne game and we counted how many times I died. And I think the average was like, what, 14 or 15 times? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's weird because I, I am starting to like the combat. I still don't like the punishing part of it. And so I actually played Bloodborne a couple months ago. I just picked it up and I played it for like three hours. And I actually got to this point where I did like a 90 minute run without dying. I was like going all over old Yarnum and I was like, I'm bad at video games. How am I not? How am I doing this well? But it just made me so stressful that I stopped playing the game. Because I was just like so anxious and stressful the entire time that I was like, you know, I think I played on like a Saturday morning and I was like, I've, I've ruined my Saturday morning. This is not relaxing at all. You know, <laughs> it was just making me too anxious. So I wasn't sure if I was going to play Elden Ring or not. And then the reviews came out and there was two kind of two things they said. Number one is they've added all these things to not necessarily make it easier, but to make it a little bit more accessible, you know, like the quote unquote bonfires are a lot closer to locations. You have those uh, checkpoint statues, you know, uh, the flasks are a little bit easier. They recharge with the groups and all that stuff. Um, so the difficulty is still there, but it's not quite as punishing is what the reviewer said. And then um, the other thing being all these people just like, this is the greatest open world game ever made. There's so much in it, so much mystery and craziness. And I'm like, God, and it got, it's, it's the number one rated game on open critic right now of all time. I think it's at like a 96, 
but the average puts it above like i think super mario odyssey is also a 96 and it's and i'm just like god damn it i'm gonna have to play this fucking game and so <laughs> so i actually i had a, I had, a, I had a gift card laying around for 50 bucks and so i was Bam. like all right i'll pay it for, I'll, I'll play it for 10 bucks um I, and i don't know i think i i am i i how do I put this? <laughs> I, I don't hate the game, but I also don't think I love it. And there's a couple things that are particular to me. Like we talk about the punishing difficulty and everything. But I think that are also uh, like this game feels like risk and reward because you're kind of like, uh, I, I want to risk it to get some runes or souls. And then so I can level up. That's my reward. But then there's also the risk of if I lose, if I lose it, they'll be dead on the ground and I'll lost all of those. I could go and try and recover them, but then there's the risk I lose them by dying again, et cetera. And I realize this game is really more just like risk, reward, re risk. It's not, it's not risk reward. It's there's too much risk in it because even when you do level up and you start adventuring out more, I'm just like tiptoeing through everything. Like not literally, but I'm always on the edge of my seat. Just going to be like, how much further can I go? Okay, I'll go a little bit further. Oh, I don't know if I want to go further. I don't know if I, uh, maybe I go a little bit further in terms of like, I'm afraid I'm going to hit an enemy. They're going to knock me down. I'm going to lose all my runes. And it's just like, great. There's like 45 minutes of progress down because I didn't get enough to, to, to level up. So I'm just sitting on this cache of runes and I'm going to lose them because I stumbled into a bad enemy. And it's just like, that's just not enjoyable, folks. You know, what, if you enjoy what if that. I told you that everything you said is true and also it's all good. <laughs> yeah. that that's the thing is that it's this is definitely an opinion you know like i i just don't like that when a video game is just like no we're just gonna keep punishing you until you get good enough um and it's one of the reasons why i never picked up sifu even though i love the design and i liked the previous game was it just it was just I, like I no we're just gonna punish you the, the thing about sifu is i don't feel that it's always fair um mm -hmm. The thing that I appreciate about FromSoft's games and don't appreciate a lot of times about imitators' games is that they still, they feel like if you learn to do this the right way, you are going to be able to beat this thing. Whereas, like, one of my, I, I mostly love this game, I'll say, and the sequel's coming out really soon, I think, uh, Salt and Sanctuary. Um, I, I played that when it first came out on PS4, and I, I think I played it on Vita a little bit too. That game is gorgeous. It nails the atmosphere and all that stuff. But those bosses, some of them are so hard, and there's no good strategy really to use for them. You have to get kind of lucky. And and that's that's what I can't stand about it. Um, yeah. One of the imitators. With, with FromSoft's games, especially, um, especially Bloodborne, well, actually, more than anything, Sekiro, um, I feel like they, they're they really, really hard. But if you put in the time, you're going to see improvement over and over again. Like you said, though, like if you don't get a lot of enjoyment out of trying something for a long time until you finally see sort of the fruits of your labor, it's not going to be a game you, you have fun with. Because that's what most of the joy in those games comes out of. Who cares about the story? Yeah. No one knows what they're talking about anyway. Uh, yeah, I think I think for me, I I I liked Celeste because Celeste was like screen based. It's like, I mean, there's yeah. some scenario, some sections that are not, but it's like, you messed up, restart the screen. You messed like, up, you restart the screen. Trials of the same sort of way, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and so I I'm okay with that if I can quickly iterate. But Elden Ring is better at this. But but some of the previous Soulsborne games were not. Where it's like, you goof this boss fight. Now it's going to take you like five ten minutes with combat and risks just to reset it. And, um, and that's not really my style, but I will say the other thing that I'm on the fence is, I don't know. I don't know if I'm feeling the open world. I feel like the open world in Elden Ring, it's, it's gorgeous. It's got some great, like, like physical space design and stuff, but it also feel, and there's some mysteries in it that are pretty cool, but it also feels like when I think about other open world games, it's like, oh, I'm going to find, you know, a really cool item or a really cool NPC or like an encounter or like, you know, a new town or something. And in this, it's it's kind of boiled down to like, I may find a good item, possibly, but a lot of times it's just kind of like consumable, a special type of consumable, or like little the rune poppers. Or it's like 
there's a cool boss fight over here, which we already talked about, not a fan of, <laughs> you know, or it's just like, here's a weird NPC with some uh, riddle. And I don't know, let's see if you can figure it out. So it's it's like the open world is not enough of a reward for me to want to actively explore it and keep risking to get coin further. So for me, it just boils down to this game is just like risk, 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 a little bit of reward when I have a good fight, but then a lot of risk. And it's that, that's why I'm just kind of bouncing off of it. It's it's definitely, in my opinion, as somebody who doesn't like Soulsborne games, this is definitely the best one to try and get into if you're coming from that perspective. But I, I just don't think it's enough for me. Yeah, I think, um, I, I mean, I'm really enjoying it mostly because, like, when I hit one of those roadblocks, I can go do something else and go explore something yeah. else and find someone else. A lot different from yeah. the other one. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. I don't have to, like, constantly throw my head at something. Um, and the other thing I like, this, not that this game is a lot easier, but, like, I've been hitting parries pretty, pretty easily. Uh, even the new blocking mechanic, like, you just block. Yeah. They hit your shield and you hit them back and then you can just pretty much instant kill them. Uh, and all those like human troop guard places and you can just kind of just take those out pretty quick and earn a bunch of souls. Or What do you mean new blocking mechanic? I don't even know if I know what you're talking about. So if, if you hold block and someone hits yeah. your shield and you immediately hit right trigger, you stun them and they kneel down and then you can... Do the stab yeah. front stab I have thing. No idea you could do that. I'm gonna have some fun with that after this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very it's, easy. It, it's 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 not even super timing heavy or anything because I can do it. That's how you know it's easy. Well, that's the best part is you just hold. It's not like you have to time the shield bash. Yeah, you just hold the thing. And um, I also really like that you can sneak and do a backstab from sneaking. I'm still yeah. mad you can't do backstabs from characters who are in animation. So like if a guy's sitting. Or a guy's leaning over a cart or something. It That's not true. Wasn't I backstab doing... sitting guys. I, I backstab a sitting guy. I haven't been able to backstab a guy oh. that was on a ballista. Maybe I was just doing it wrong. Because uh, I definitely well, I yeah, mean, ballista guy I tried. But you, I, I, I used the R R T instead of of doing the the light attack, and you st and I still had like the stab animation for that. So I just sort of did that instead, and it worked. <laughs> but yeah, the first time I tried to backstab him, and I got jumped by everyone around him. But it, but it could also be they have a lot of health. Like the guy that I backstabbed when he was sitting down, I took half his health and then he got up. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, this is a big guy. And then like and then the rest of my attacks uh, were barely doing any damage to him. So it's not an instant kill. In the other From games? Like, I'm not sure. Enemies have iframes for days in this after you back, backstab them. And it's really infuriating. Oh, really? Yeah. I was surprised. Really? I was spamming shield bash. And a guy hit me, and then I just kept spamming it, and his next attack, I just parried. Like, I was just hitting, wow. like, there was enough inside of his swing window for me to parry after getting hit, like, and missing. So I was I was genuinely surprised by that. Um, wow. I think Torrent is a good addition for traversal. Uh, I think jumping 100%. is pretty great, even though it looks a little bit goofy. Um, your character's just like, hmm, hmm. Uh, like... Like and like, unanimated jumping. They're like flying up and then landing. It's really weird, <laughs> um, but it's cool. I keep forgetting about it, and the bosses keep like doing sweeping attacks, and I just roll backwards instead of jumping over them because yep. of muscle memory. Yeah. Um, man. Uh, uh, anyone have final words on this before we move to the news? Yeah, I, I just want to say, even though I'm a little bit of a negative Nancy on this, I, I'm still going to play it. I, I decided to buy this and not buy Gran Turismo 7 next week because I'm going out of town a week after Gran Turismo 7 comes out and I want to give it more time than that. So that's a long, long winded way of saying it's basically going to be me and an Elden Ring for two weeks. I'm going to I'm going to keep bashing my head against it. I'm not going to give it up just yet. And, and I'll, I'll see if I can crack that nut or not. Who knows? Remember, Ian, we can uh, summon each other and fight together. Yeah, I was I was trying to look up how the co-op works. I let, Maybe we should just do a co-op stream. But it's it convoluted like, it's like every FromSoft game, uh, and it involves yeah. many fingers, from what I've been able to tell. But um, have you guys... Okay, quick question. Have you guys fought... So when somebody invades your world, they show up as a, as a finger, as a red guy. Is yeah. that right? Invader. There, I, this is not a spoiler, because it's very near the beginning area. There's a little river stream, and I noticed, because it happened to me three times in a row, every time you go, 
there's an there's an npc invader <laughs> and he and, and he comes in and he actually acts like a player so the first time i, I thought he was a player yeah. yeah and then and then he starts and then he starts throwing off lines and then i think there's another guy that spawns in but i always die before he spawns in and it's just like what is happening it's very weird i, I, I they've cool. done that they've done that in all all of them demon souls i've i've i don't know if demon souls has it but there's invaders in all the other games and they always do that and it's really mm-hmm. weird because they feel so real. Yes, Demon yes. Souls definitely has it. Um, it, it's the part where um, there's like the the axes that are swinging across, and it's like, and there's the like blisters in front firing the arrows. Once you get to the end of that, like it's really difficult. One of those things comes down and starts trying to fight you. Um, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, they're. I, I really like that they do that because it's like that's a strictly online feature, and they're like, "Hey, if you play offline, we want you to have that experience too." And that it's like, and, and they nail that AI because it it totally feels like a um another player. It's super interesting. Uh, okay. Yeah. Wow, that was a long section of talking about what we've been playing. Uh, it's not too much news this week, but it is time for the news, which means we got to play the news theme which means I'm going to hit this button and play the news theme. Oh, no, I'm not, because I turned it down all the way. Every week, something new. Here we go. Now we're playing the news theme. There it is. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What is up, (coughs) news? Sorry. I had to cough. Um, folks, there's some news this week. Um, I didn't put it in any sort of order because I forget to do that. But I just want to talk about my favorite bit of news here, which I don't want to say uh, I was yeah, attacked this? by a hate group. But I just want to say that there was a certain slack about video game news that didn't seem to care about the Dwarf Fortress release date. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see this. It got the Dwarf Fortress Steam got a release date. It got a release window, Ian. A release window. Oh. Uh, anyways, th- there's this email from Kit Fox. Uh, I think Tarn wrote it. Uh, basically saying they're shooting for this fall, uh, if everything lines up well. But if not, it won't be this fall. Um, and I think their caveat was, if it wasn't out in the, f- if it comes out in the fall, they won't have time to do Steam achievements. Uh, which I'm okay with, but a lot of people were against that because they're like, you can use Steam achievements to do tutorials. And in my head, I'm like, you can do tutorials without Steam achievements. Um, that's fine. Who needs tutorials? It's Dwarf Fortress. They hate those things anyways. Um, <laughs> I, I think I'm the only person who gets those emails, uh, but that game is looking so good on the PC yeah. uh, with their new stuff and just like adding an actual UI to that video game. Is that what they mean by release date? Is that it's not just text everywhere yeah. anymore? So it's it's okay. the Steam release, uh, yeah. which has an official graphical pack, keyboard support, um, not awful graphics. Um, I, I'm a I'm a Dwarf Fortress apologist who also doesn't play it that often, but uh, is enraptured by it because it's incredible. Um, it's anyways, great. that's my tiny bit of news. Um. Does anyone want to talk about anything in specific? Um, I feel like it's a lot of like. Yeah. Can D-tier. we talk about this uh, PlayStation Spartacus? Because I actually did not see this. So let's. Oh, yeah. Yes. This news yeah is. So it looks like PlayStation Spartacus, which is PlayStation's rumored answer to Xbox Game Pass. Uh, Jeff Grubb, a notable gaming journalist, says there's going to be three tiers for Spartacus. Essential, which is around ten dollars, it's basically PlayStation Plus, uh, which is what PlayStation Plus is multiplayer plus some free games each month. Um, extra, which is thirteen dollars per month, this includes a downloadable game catalog offering anything on PS Now that was downloadable, which is a decent amount. So basically, PS Now plus PS Plus for thirteen dollars a month. It does not include streaming. Uh, premium, which is $16, includes any everything from the first two tiers, as well as classic games, game streaming, and game trials. This, I, there's part of me that's like, yeah, sure, give me Sony Game Pass, but also, why are you making it so damn complicated, you know? <laughs> yeah. 
just what? I. It's it's how much is Game Pass Ultimate without PC? Fifteen bucks. Fifteen or, bucks. Wait, a month. that includes oh, no. PC, right? All right. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that does include PC. I think it's ten bucks a month for just the console, but I'm not even sure if they sell it that way anymore. Yeah, I'll they still do, but no one buys it that way. Yeah. yeah. So I, I forget where I saw this, but basically their premium top tier price is more expensive than Game Pass Ultimate. And doesn't yes. include first party day and date PlayStation games. That's correct. Yep. Which <laughs> well, yeah. according to according to their current plans, Grub says yeah. that nothing's finalized. That, yeah. uh, that sucks. <laughs> I'm not yeah. kidding. <laughs> so let me let me talk about the uh, the Game Pass plans real quick. Um ten dollars for console, console game pass that does not include gold. Uh ten dollars for PC game pass which includes EA Play, and $15 for Ultimate, which includes Gold, which is multiplayer, and EA Play. Um, and yeah. And, and, and PC. Yeah. It's console, PC, Gold, and EA Play. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I don't think the PlayStation pricing is that far off. It's just, like we said, everybody picks the Ultimate on, uh, on the Xbox Game Pass. Sure, they have tiers, but there's really only one tier. Anybody should and anybody will buy. Why are they complicating things? Well, it also here? has first party game watches. Uh, yeah, exactly. Which yeah, it's not going to have, which is, you know, it sounds nuts. But honestly, Microsoft has to be, you know, really loss leading. Probably still, I think as of like last year, they said they weren't really making much money off of Game Pass, if any. Um, so Sony realistically can't afford to do that. But still, when you're you you have a very clear competitor that you're going after it seems like a like an odd decision to price it like that and then not include a feature like that i don't yeah not at all especially when i i don't want to say their ps now library is not good but their ps now library especially the downloadable library is not as crazy good as game pass and it's not as up to date so for them to try and price it the same is crazy i feel like they should have dropped it to 10 bucks for ps plus and ps now and then you're going i'm not getting as much but it's cheaper I can see the comparison there, yeah. but trying to price it the same yeah. when your your library is not as good is 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 not great. I, I can't imagine the nightmares of downloading the wrong version of the game without a oh smart delivery. God. Like, oops, I oh, downloaded no. the PS2 yeah. version of a game. It sucks. <laughs> like, yeah, um, it's bad. Someone was saying, I think Steven we work with was saying, um, and this was a problem for me for a while. If you have like the PS4 disc inserted in your PS5 and then you do the digital upgrade, every time you start your system, it will try to install the PS4 version again. Wow. You have to cancel that every single time. And I thought they fixed it, but he said that yeah. keeps happening to him with, uh, with like Sackboy. It was happening to me, I think, with Assassin's Creed. And like, Oof. yeah, the, the, for as as much as the Xbox Series X interface resembles the Xbox One, as in basically is the same thing, yeah. it work it works very well. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, the, the PlayStation One still has some definite things that they need to figure out, and that's the biggest. <laughs> uh, Ian, was it you who played a PS4 game for a while before realizing? It? Yeah, like I I knew it was coming because I had heard about these complaints, but I bought Final Fantasy VII Remake. I, I bought the PS4 version digital because it was on sale and I installed it and I started playing it and I was like, why is this running at like 20 frames per second? This is not supposed to be it. And it took me about 30 seconds before I went, oh, shit. And I went back and I was like, I was like, it's the PS4 version, but it wasn't super clear. And then um, and then I spent about 60 seconds messing around with the PlayStation menus, trying to figure out like, OK, how do I tell the download the PS5 copy? How do I tell it? How do I tell it? How do I tell it? So I finally had to look it up online, not through Sony, but through some website. It's like, here's how to upload it. You know, they're just like looking for clicks. And I, I gave them a click because they told me how to do it. And it's like you got to go to the store and you like almost purchase it. But then it's just like, just kidding. It's the zero dollar digital upgrade version for the yeah. PS5. And it's just... And then I had to sit there. I mean, I didn't sit there, but then I was just like, all right, I'm not playing this game until I have to wait for it to download all over again. <laughs> but now I'm the right version. That happened with me. I was playing, well, not exactly, but I was, I was playing the PS4 version because it came out before the PlayStation 5 had come out. And I got several hours in, maybe three or four hours in. And then the PS5 came out and I uh, apparently hadn't backed up my save 
uh, to, to the very latest point when I played it like in the cloud. So when I put the PS5 in it and started up, I was like, why am I like an hour and a half before where I was? Is it worth it to go take that PS4 that I just put in storage out? No, it's not. <laughs> we'll see it again. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of that, I, I actually, <clears throat> um, Ian, I was watching you play Kingdom Hearts, and I was on my computer, and I was like, oh, you know what? I want to play some Nobody Saves the World. And I was like, oh, it's on PC. So I download it on PC, load it up, has my save in the cloud, play the game, save the game, end it, talk, uh, watch the stream. Uh, next day, go to my console, hit qu quick resume on the on the game, and it says, hey, we detect a newer save on the cloud. So we closed the game for you. We're going to relaunch it. Here's your latest save. And I was like, thank you for making this perfectly seamless. Like, because my worry was yeah. like, oh, I'm going to quick resume and it's going to have the old save. But Xbox is like, yo, we got you. Uh, we're going to close the game. And here's your latest save. Um, yeah, I will say, though, just a caveat. As somebody who, when I got the Series X, I put my One X in the bedroom and so I, I sometimes, especially when I was playing like Mass Effect and Nobody Saves the World and other stuff, I was quickly hopping between consoles and especially going from console to PC with Forza Horizon 5. That system does have problems. Um, I, I have issues where it just will not sync to the latest. And so I end up with like a PC save for Forza that is different from my console save and they just will not sync together. And then until like a month later, I boot up the game and it finally syncs up. So there, there are some problems with Xbox, but at totally. least those problems are like those problems are rare and the front end is very clean and intuitive. And it, a lot of times there's no front end because it just does it for you. Whereas PlayStation is like, no, you got to dig into a whole bunch of menus just to get the better version. You know, it's bonkers. yeah. Granted, there were 12 hours between those play sessions, but it's like just the fact that that game's smart enough to be like or that system smart enough to be like, hey, uh, we need to do this thing. And instead of just doing it and freaking me out, it's telling me what it's doing and yeah. letting, and even giving me the option to say no is the other thing, um, which is, is great as well. If I was someone who needed two distinct saves, you know? Um, okay. Moving on. Uh, I got to hit this news because it's in the thumbnail. Uh, the fallout TV series adaptation at Amazon has now cast Walton Goggins, uh, I'm a huge Goggins fan. I'm Gaga for Goggins. Yeah. Uh, he's great in The Hateful Eight. Uh, he's great in things that aren't The Hateful Eight. Um, he was also in Django Unchained. I watched those recently. That's why they're on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> um, but fantastic actor. Um, underrated, I would say. He's um, great. He's great in Righteous Gemstones. Very funny TV oh, show. Oh, really? Also, I don't... Oh, he's in that also? I, he's, I watch Vice Principals. Yeah, he's, he's, he's Uncle, Uncle Baby Billy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great name. Uh, great I feel show. like he's one of those people, which I could be completely wrong, that is like a nice person in real life. Um, uh, I don't know if you've seen some of his Instagrams. He's kind of like a oh, weird, never very fitness nut. Oh, okay. That's okay. At least yeah, he's not like a, a Nazi weird. or something. Um, no. Pro-Russian. Pro <laughs> um i i Speaking of I, which I didn't check the news in hours i'm kind of scared to now but yeah uh it, so i i don't know how i feel about this i love goggins yeah bring me goggins i think fallout could make a great tv show however the showrunners are jonathan nolan and lisa joy who uh jonathan nolan write in wrote interstellar which is it's not a good script and they also did Westworld, which kind of fell on its face pretty quickly. So it's like, it's a little bit like, I don't know, these people, they're they are kind of hit and miss. So it's, uh, I want to be excited for this, but I'm not sure. I think that that his brother is more to blame in the case of Interstellar for problems that that had. I'm an apologist for that movie. I like it. And Memento yeah. is my favorite movie. Memento is my favorite movie of all time. Um, my problem is mostly just that I don't think Fallout is very interesting as a... At least, at least I'll say Fallout Three onward. I don't think it's all that interesting as a post-apocalyptic things go. I'm much more interested yeah, that's a good in. Point. I'm much more interested in what. Um, I don't even know what's happening at this point, but uh, a few years ago they announced a Metro thing, uh, either a movie oh, yeah. or some sort of series. Um, that being said, because he's in this, I will at least give it a try. Um, because even if it's bad, like he's entertained, like like the Tomb Raider movie, for example, that movie's not great. I, I mean, the new one with Alicia Vikander. 
uh, it's okay. But he uh, he pops up, and I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having yeah. a good time now. I think. Yeah. I think uh, from what I know about Westworld, uh, at least season one of this show will probably be good. <clears throat> and <It's> also, <laughs> I totally agree with you. I, I love Fallout. Fallout Three is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, mostly because I just played the literal crap out of it when I was a kid playing it. So that's most of the reason. Um, but like, other than the like lore of like vaults and like the kind of fifties goofiness, I really don't know what you're paying for as far as a post-apocalyptic TV show, other than the name. Like, I think you can hit all of these things without basing it around fallout. Uh, and paying yeah. for that brand. Um, I think that so is I, what it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was just going to say, have you guys seen the movie A Boy and His Dog with Don Johnson? No, um, we're, on a, we're on a Tarantino actor kick today, though, weren't we? Uh, I, I feel like this is probably one of those movies that inspired Tarantino. So this is from 1975. And the reason why I bring it up is I feel like a Fallout TV show could be good if they just go off the walls bonkers with it and and a boy and a dog is about this guy and his dog that sounds in the (laughs) post-apocalypse the dog has had radiation so the dog is talking i I think it's maybe just the boy that can understand the dog and and they just like stumble across this weird like like literally like a fallout vault type situation where this is like underground society that has their own utopia but then I forget there's some weird rules that he doesn't like. And there's like this girl that he's supposed to fall in love with. And then he runs away with the girl. But then the girl does something to the girl's evil. And that becomes clear at the end. And then like the ending scene is just him and the dog like eating the girl. <laughs> like like they cooked her over a fire. And it's just like so off the wall, like 70s sci-fi bonkers in the post-apocalypse. And I'm like, yeah, that would work in Fallout. Like don't do a generic post-apocalypse, ooh, nuclear shelter type thing. No, go off the wall the best parts of fallout are when it's crazy like that one companion in fallout 3 who's the the ghoul and he's just or maybe it's new vegas i'm talking about and he's like uh you know like it's just yeah. the craziness that lean into that and not that, and don't try to do like, something serious the vaults with all the garys in it yes uh, who are just clones or the there's another vault with like the purple haze one is something else yeah uh, yeah I, which, I agree i think if they now okay if they embrace those It'll be good. Yes. But I now I'm talking myself out of getting excited for this because it's Jonathan Nolan. I don't think he's capable of doing that. It really should be like, like I'm not a huge James Gunn fan, but he would fit that fallout aesthetic a lot more because he would go over the top craziness with it. I don't see Jonathan Nolan doing that. And there's plenty so of may, good may, music for yeah. James Gunn to use. Yeah. yeah. So I, I agree. I it, it doesn't seem like it's a good fit for him. Now that you're talking about Don Johnson and crazy stuff, though, I'm thinking about uh, have you seen uh, I'm going to turn to a movie segment? Um, <laughs> Brawl and Cell Block 99. No, that sounds good, though, just from the title. So it's Vince Vaughn is the main character in it. He gets. <gasps> uh, oh, someone's think- Googling yeah, I haven't seen it, but <laughs> I've seen little clips from it. I, I have heard of this. I've heard it's very good. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't remember why he gets thrown in jail. I think he gets he gets roped into helping someone with a drug run that he doesn't want to do. And and uh, anyway, he gets told, like, that his, like, estranged wife is going to get killed unless he starts helping out this one uh, really powerful inmate. But to get to that inmate, he has to be in a higher security prison. So he keeps intentionally getting into fights. So they keep sending him to <laughs> anyway. By the end of this movie, it is so cartoonishly violent. Uh, but in like a very 70s way where it's like, oh, that was clearly a dummy whose head just exploded with a watermelon inside. Like that sort of thing. <laughs> and Don Johnson plays the warden of the prison at the end. Oh god, that um, sounds incredible. It rules. <laughs> oh man, now I gotta watch that. Yeah, yeah I think it's on that... Amazon or uh, maybe HBO Max, one of those. I'll have to I'll have to check it. I like that's what I want the fallout to be. I think that's how you make it unique. And I'm just not sure the people in charge of this project are going to do that. Walter Goggins, though, would be fantastic in a crazy off the wall Fallout show, though. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Um. Okay. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna hit one more one. One more one. Uh. Because we're over time. Uh. I just wanted to say, man. I'm trying to pick here. What's a good one? I, I, are any of them worth it? 
I mean, the uh, near one is me, but but there's also not much to talk about with it. <laughs> yeah, there's a near Automata anime on the way. I guess we can do quick hits. Uh, there was cool. a first look at the PSVR 2. Uh, there's a new Nintendo Lego set. Uh, from what I can tell from the headline, it's only the price is available, which is $229. Uh, which would, I assume, I'm going to guess it's probably a castle? Super Nintendo. I that's probably the boring thing that they are doing. I was hoping that they were going to I'm hoping that they do a GameCube because I think there would be more ways that you yeah. could interact with that like yeah. spin the disc and stuff. The other thing uh, is they they could do Peach's Castle and do like a little Mario 64 or like play set with the castle. Think it would be that expensive though. Like Yeah, cuz the question block's the not 229, right? This is the same exact price right. as the NES one. Yeah. Um, so but this is that that is like 2300 pieces. Is, is is right around the range because it's basically 10 cents per piece yeah um uh, i'm trying to remember how much is the 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 question block is that less oh i think it's like 150 i want to say yeah i, I want to say it's not, not bad because it doesn't have a tv with it so. yeah oh man i um 170 you can't see any of my legos but that seinfeld kit is still one of my favorites so far i love um, seinfeld my, my wife hates it she won't even let me talk about it but <laughs> You know, you can come on here anytime and talk about Seinfeld. <laughs> I love Seinfeld so much. Oh, Friends, I, 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 I want to be so. I, I did post a picture from it today. I couldn't help myself uh, because I want to be. I want to be sensitive to global political issues. But the the risk episode. Uh, <laughs> I've been thinking about that for two weeks. Ukraine is not weak. <laughs> uh, Ian on this very podcast. Uh, Nostradamus the war, so I blame him for everything anyways. I didn't I didn't Nostradamus. They've been building up forces for like six months. It's I just happened to bring it embellishing, up. Embellishing <laughs> Ian. I will say this. In all honesty, though, the situation sucks. I have coworkers in Ukraine and they were like they couldn't make meetings this morning because they were busy like taking care of their family, like hiding from air raid sirens, things like that. Situation sucks. Have have them in your thoughts and prayers as as worthless as that sounds now that I say it out loud, but really situation sucks. Yeah. Yeah. You're not giving them PTO though, right? <laughs> Joke. No, it's funny. We, I, I, I met with them last <laughs> week and I got on and they were talking to Ukrainian and they were like, Oh, Hey. And I'm like, Hey, uh, how are you guys doing? I know the news is a little worrying. And they laughed and they were like, Honestly, we weren't even sure you would notice as like an American. And I was like, that's fair. I just happen to pay attention to the news. That's how that's how oh, I know. That's fantastic. But yeah, I, I like I told him, I was like, hey, if things go south, for, forget about this company. You have no obligation to do anything, to do any work. Focus on protecting your family. Oh, yeah. I don't care. I'll figure out how to cover your work elsewhere. You take care of you. And they were like, yeah, that makes sense. I'm like, seriously. Don't don't try and like call in from the road while you're fleeing the country. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, folks, if you are listening to this, um, I have recently tweeted. I know Gabe probably retweeted. Uh, there's a GameSpot article with uh, a bunch of links uh, if you want to help out monetarily uh, or anything like that for the Ukrainians because, um, yeah, shit's fucked. So uh, yeah. go help them out. Um, folks, that's going to be it for the show. I'm going to play the music that ends the show, which is the same as the beginning music. Uh, you can't hear it, but now you can. Uh, folks, thank you so much for watching this, David. I know you were here for the entire stream, which is surprising. Um, because, um, actually, it's not surprising. I like you, so I won't make fun of you. Uh, Gabe, thank you so much for being on this. It was uh, a couple weeks in the making. Uh, but I'm glad you were able to make it. I will definitely be having you on again. Uh, I apologize for roasting you at the beginning of the stream. Um, I, I hope someday I'll be able to post in the new Welcome. Slack again. Uh, but I don't expect it to be any time in the future. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, it was insightful. And I think you're the first guest who's actually like someone knowledgeable that we've had on. <laughs> Other than just like my friends and acquaintances. <laughs> in the uh in the weird youtube sphere um ian i don't care about you but folks if you want to check out our hot hot content you can go to subpixelfilms.com that brings you straight to our youtube channel uh where you can see all of our cool stuff um i was telling the water heater guy today about our morristown game vault documentary oh so just call it just go, kill go it check already. that out Come no I gotta, I gotta i gotta make sure i time this it's it's so excellent um gabe where can people find you if they want to hear you on the internet yeah so if you want to see my 
dumb diarrhea jokes and stuff like that. I'm uh, <laughs> at Gaming Angel Gabe on Twitter. Um, yeah, that's the, the primary place where you find me, and of course, up on uh, on GameSpot. You'll see stuff that I've written pretty much every day. Uh, yeah, and we'll see you next week. I missed the timing. <laughs> 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 Bye, David. Bye, everyone.